Hey, Salt and Light family. Hope everybody's doing well. It's good to be back with you again, coming to you with another word from the Lord on a specific word that you can use in everyday life, but also what you read in the Bible. And that word is without. So without has two different meanings in the Bible, and it also has synonyms. So I want to start with a scripture, Proverbs 25, 28. A man or woman without self-control is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So basically, a man or a woman without self-control is like a city that is broken down and without walls. And some of the synonyms or what without means is in the absence of, with the absence, omission, or avoidance of, not with without or none of or lacking now what it's saying here is someone without self-control is like a city that is broken down and without walls in other words it's pretty um it's pretty demolished if you don't have any self-control and you just kind of do anything all willy-nilly and the best thing to do is just surrender your life to jesus and give the holy spirit control of your life and then he will teach you and help you achieve self-control or or let that fruit be manifested in your life and it is something that we learn it is is some of the fruits of the spirit <clears throat> and the root of it also is in patience now another uh, scripture is hebrews thirteen twelve. wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate or in this aspect, it means outside of, like or outside of the gate, outside of the city. So sometimes when you're reading without in the Bible, depending on how it's referring to something, it means outside of. So let me read that again. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without, suffered without the gates, the high, and the gates are the highest seat in the city. That's where people would come in and out, and that's where they did business. Basically, if you go into a, um, a town that has a bunch of gates in and out, you'll see a lot of the people in the marketplace doing business. But it's also where the elders sat, the people of leadership, the poly, you know the uh, town leaders, the business owners, people that you know traded and sold, the tax collectors, and things like that. It was an important place. But what I loved when I read this. Jesus was born outside the city gates that he was going to live in because he was with people where they were <clears throat> not considered big or important. He was born in a stable because there was no room at the hotel or the inn. And, but God did that to show that he was Emmanuel with us, that he was with the lowly or the people who didn't have as much as the wealthy. He's, he was with everyone. And he did this to show that I am with you, and it doesn't matter who you are or where you're at, I'm going to be right there with you. So that's Hebrews 13, 12, that Jesus was born without or outside the gates. Um, Jesus is the king and suffered outside the city. So how many kings are going to have a throne, are going to have a dominion and have a realm, and they're going to suffer outside of their own realm? Um outside of their city no that city is what they rule and reign but jesus is the king of the earth he's the king of all hearts and souls for those who are you know have made him their lord and savior uh, um there's a song by a group they're no longer um recording but it was it's called down here and the first time i heard it was a few years ago at christmas but it's called um how many kings and i just love that song and basically some of the words or how many kings would give up their thrones to come save a world that was dying and alone. It's, it's a beautiful song. So it's called, um, down, it's a group's called Down Here, and it's called How Many Kings. You should listen to that on YouTube. It's a beautiful song. And it's basically describing Jesus, that he basically left heaven. He left the royal and the splendor and the protection of heaven to come down here and be with us and to die for us and to die with us because you know he his mother is human so he understands how we feel he understands what you're going through right now he understands the frustrations and the disappointments that you suffered today or last week or five minutes ago and that's why you 
you got to know he's for you. He's not against you. It's Satan who comes to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. That's John 10.10. 10. But Jesus come to give us life and life more abundantly. Revelation 22, 15, excuse me, 13 and 15. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Everything starts, started, and it ends with him. Even before the foundation of the earth, he said, I am. He was already there with Father God. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. For without, or outside the city of heaven, or the city gates of heaven, this is verse 15, for without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, or those in idolatry, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. So if you're outside the, the gates of heaven or the city of heaven, where are you? You're not, you're not laying outside the gates. You're either in heaven or you're in hell. And these are people who continue in this sin. They're unrepentant. They will not repent after God has given them so many chances to repent, continually living in willful sin. And basically, uh, it's like Jesus told the woman caught in adultery. He forgave her. And he said, go and sin no more. He for, he'll forgive you again, but after a while it becomes, you need deliverance from something. You need healing and deliverance from a spirit that's controlling you. Or you need to surrender your life totally to Christ. And as uh, I like to listen to Christy Jesse, she says, you need to get over yourself and turn yourself into Jesus. Because she said, that's what I did. And, you know, this him hawing around and... One day you're you got you're with the Lord. The next day you got your foot in the world. That means you're not totally surrendered to Him. He hasn't become. He might have become your Savior, but He's not your Lord. Because when someone is your Lord, basically you know Jesus said, "Not my will, but Yours be done." You do what the Lord wills and wants, not what you want, not what your flesh wants. Now we're still human. We make mistakes. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. And all we have to do is repent. And, you know, 1 John 1, 9 says that if we sin, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everybody has failed. Everybody's made mistakes. But what you do is you get up and you run right back to your Lord and to the king and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And say, Lord, help me not to do this. I, I just feel there's somebody right now that's struggling with something. And it could be a willful sin. It could be drugs. It could be pride. It could be anger lying, whatever it is, all you have to do is say, Lord, help me not to do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I surrender this to you. I surrender my life. I surrender my will to you. And sometimes we've given him our hearts and I had a light family member say, you know, you, you, you do it enough just to have fire insurance. <laughs> you don't want that. You want to live the victorious life that he died to give you on the earth. And trust me, I have seen so many things that God has done in my life. And I've seen him doing the lives of others that I've prayed for. But not only me, the things he's brought me through. I don't want anybody to miss out on that greatness and that joy, the excitement I have every day to see what the Lord's going to, what me and the Lord's going to do, or what he's going to do. And the surprises or the answers he's going to bring me or the solutions. Well, he wants to do the same thing for you. So you're, we're not these people who are without the gates of the city, I, I, all I want to do is run through them and fall at his feet and hug him and say, Lord, you know, you're my king. The Bible says we're going to throw our crowns at his feet. I'll hold the door for people as they come in. Just let me be there in your presence, Lord. There is just nothing greater than his presence. That's the best present you can get is the presence of God in your life. And that to be continually there, it is the most fulfilling, the most satisfying, the most healing no drug can satisfy you like he can. No relationship. No job title. No TV show. No social media. Nothing can satisfy you like Christ. And if that's more your focus than him, that's an idol. That's what the Bible calls idolatry. I, an idol is not necessarily a statue. It can be. If you have a Buddha doll in your house, you need to get rid of it because that is new age and it's not of God and it's bringing demon spirits in your house. People that are involved in things like that, 
they're either sick a lot, they're depressed a lot, there's cancer running rampant, you know, that's a, it's a demonic disease, and it comes in through these open doors. So you should go through your house and say, Holy Spirit, is there anything in my house, my life, my car, at the cubicle, at my job that offends you? And if you're married and you still have old love letters from an ex or a ring, you need to get rid of all that and be totally one with your spouse. Because not only is, is there still an open door to the past, but if they know about it, it's hurting them. I don't know who that's for, but somebody told me that the Lord is telling me that somebody's been fighting over something from the past. And if you're in a new relationship and you're newly married or you're newly with someone, you need to let it go and embrace the new that God has given you and show that person the love and respect that they deserve. It, sh it should be both ways. That is part of how you die to yourself. And I'm going to be doing, I'm going to get ready to start a series of kingdom marriage messages, kingdom spouse, um, things that I've learned through my life. You know, I have been married before, actually twice. My first one ended in divorce. The second one, he went home to be with the Lord almost nine years ago. But I've always had a heart for marriage and a heart for spouses. I've officiated weddings. I'm going to officiate one in April. So um, marriage is, just to give a little um, intro into it, marriage, a godly marriage, is supposed to represent Jesus' relationship to his church or to his bride on the earth. And you, you could be living heaven on earth. Not necessarily so perfect, but it's almost perfect. I've been there. So... If your marriage is in trouble, you want to be sure to start watching these videos that are coming up soon about kingdom spouse, kingdom marriage, love, agape love, love from the throne of God, the love of God, um, Christ at the center of your marriage, the threefold cord that is not easily broken. It doesn't matter if you're in divorce court right now, you can stop it in Jesus' name and you can say, God, take over my life and my marriage. And just say, Lord, your will be done. Let his will be done. Um, so I don't know who that was for, but take it and run with it. Synonyms. And synonym is a word that means almost like same. When, when I was in school, they'd say, it's not cinnamon. <laughs> it's synonyms. Even though I love cinnamon, I put it in my coffee. S-Y-N-O-N-Y-M-S. Synonyms. And it means same. It's almost the same word. So some of the same words of without are lacking, wanting, needing, requiring, short of, in need of, deprived of, or destitute of, if it's really bad. But without in the Bible also means outside, like outside the city, outside the town, outside of uh, what I'm talking about right now. You know, the one we just read in Revelation was outside the city gates of heaven. So... Uh, we never want to be without, and we aren't, because we are with the, if you're born again, we have the King of Kings, and there is no lack in Him. There is no uh, wanting, needing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not, what? Want. But my God, Philippians 4.19, shall or will supply all my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And of course, a lot of, again, King James is in um, Old English, it was uh, re-released um, re by King James, who was the first cousin of Elizabeth I, Henry Tudor's last child, and he recommissioned it. He was Protestant like Elizabeth was, his, and he recommissioned it and rewrote everything. So that's why you see these, thou shalt. But it's still a very powerful word to read, and I love it. I mean, the man loved God. He was a king, but he loved the Lord. And if you want to compare it, you could use like the New King James. I like the New Living Translation. I'm just drawn to that to read with the King James. Um, sometimes I've read the Eastern Standard Version. So just, I say stick with the King James and, and read something side by side. Just ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to the Bible. Some of you are, are needing a Bible. You've been saying, Lord, I want a Bible. Which one should I get? The main thing is you just have the Word of God. This is one of mine. I've had it for a long time, and I, I've preached out of this, and I have held it and prayed. I've held it when I've cried for someone. Um, a late family member I knew, she used to put it on the floor, and she'd literally stand on top of it, and she'd say, God, I'm standing on your Word. 
And it just blessed me when she would do that. You know, we literally need to stand on his word. You don't have to stand on top of it, but just say, God, I'm standing on your promises. Was there, what was that song? Standing on the promises. Anyways, I'd have to look it up. So that is the word tonight about without. We are not without if we are in Christ. Don't go without word time. Don't go without prayer time. Don't go without eating healthy. Don't go without getting good sleep. Take care of yourself and just know that the Lord is with you. If you don't know Jesus and you've not made him the Lord of your life or you want to totally surrender all areas, I mean, hey, I have. <laughs> and I continue to sometimes. I say, Lord, if there's just some in me that I haven't let go of through stubbornness or pride or anything I, that I don't realize is there, I repent of it and I let it go. You know, it's just a daily once you become born again, it is an instant eternal thing, but there is the process of sanctification that you go through because the Lord does a work in us daily once we give our lives to him. Because, you know, some of us come from hard, painful backgrounds. Some of us come from abuse. Some people come from families that were, you know, in the occult. They were in gangs. You just never know. It's a daily process. So just daily surrender your life to him if you feel you need to. Spend time in the word and pray. And when God shows you something that you need to get rid of, whether it's in your home or in your attitude, just say, Lord, take it, I release it, and, and I repent of it. Take that and make it like you want, like it's you. I'll, I would say that, Lord, take if there's anything in me, take it out and put you in there instead and show me how to do it. And he's been teaching me for many years. So... Um, and what he does for me, he will do for you. Thank you. He just amplified the word idolatry to me again as I was looking. You know, again, yeah, yes, Lord. He's like, go back to idolatry. Idolatry is just not, not just statues that you can have in your house. You could have, um, idolatry can be yourself. We live in a world of constant selfies, <laughs> Everybody's constantly, you know, look at me, you know, doing this. There's nothing wrong with having fun with your phone and posting on social media, your family, and your fun times. But when it comes to the point that you're so obsessed with yourself and your looks and you're putting like 20 pictures a day of yourself, you might want to check that with the Holy Spirit and say, if this is, idol if I'm doing idolatry, I which it really looks like it, you may not even be aware. Just say, I repent, Lord, and help me not to be in idolatry. Idolatry can also be um, a job, a car you're driving. It could be a title. It could be your bank account. It could be, you know, constantly putting pictures of all your expensive toys on social media. Or what's the word they use today? Flexing. The Bible says to let another's lips praise you and not your own. That's in Proverbs. So ask the Holy Spirit not to let you boast in anything or brag in anything except him and his goodness because that can lead to idolatry now the the lord is so loving and merciful he'll teach you and he will show you um this is an idol you might not want to say that you might not want to act that way you know again it comes from our past it comes from trauma it comes from things that we it was just our old nature and the old man is still in us but as the more we give it to Christ and surrender to the Holy Spirit and ask him to let the fruits of the Spirit become bigger in your life, let his voice become bigger, all that little by little starts dying under the, under the blood. I mean, our sins are washed away, but we still need to occasionally repent of something or, you know, I shouldn't have snapped at him. I didn't mean to. God knows that. Sometimes it comes out of frustration, hurt, but if it's a lifestyle then get along with the Lord and say, Lord, what is it about me that's causing me to act this way? And help me to change it. I give it to you. Please change it. I don't want to act this way. That's how I talk to him. Or I'll say, Lord, you know, I really need, I need this to be more simpler. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So what is it I'm doing? Or what should I do to make this whatever simpler? And God, he's so faithful. When you ask him, he's going to show you. He's going to either send you down a road and you're going to see a sign or someone's going to call you or you're going to get a text or an email. He's always there to help you. That's why he's having me right now do these teachings on just simple words, but they have so many different meanings. 
because he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And there's many out there reading the Bible and they're frustrated because they don't understand what they're reading because you need the Holy Spirit to understand the Word of God. So the first thing when you're reading the Bible, if you're, you're confused and you don't understand, then are you saved? Have you, have you, are you born again or born from above or meaning in covenant with God through the blood of Jesus? Then if you're not, then you simply say, Jesus, forgive my sins. I'm a sinner. I need your help. Take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Come in my heart and forgive me and wash me in your blood. I'm yours. And that's when you become a new creation. And then you go back and read the Bible. You're going to start seeing it with his eyes because it was written by his spirit and through his heart. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There's times I've read stuff and I didn't quite understand it because he hadn't given me the revelation. So I prayed years ago and the Lord has always prayed through me because Romans 8 says the Holy Spirit prays the mind and the will of God. So there's many times the Holy Spirit in me tells me what to pray. He just starts praying it through me to the Father because he's constantly praying the mind and the will of God over each one of us. And we'll say things or we'll pray things that we didn't even intend to. That's because he's doing it through us. And the other thing is Jesus, as soon as he sat down at the right hand of the Father after God raised him from the dead, he sat down, he said, sit here until I make your enemies your footstool. Well, guess what? If we're in the body of Christ, they're under our feet too. I don't care if you're in his little toe, they're under your feet too. So take authority over them and tell them to go in the name of Jesus. Quit letting the devil beat you up and beat your kids up and beat your family up. Take authority. You know, we're going to have to talk about authority. <laughs> and... um he just cares so much. He want, he's he's in the details. He he's in the small things. He want he doesn't want you confused or frustrated or not understanding. So I pray the Lord just some of you right now. I'm just seeing like this this thick cap over your head. It's almost like a it's like a helmet, but it's just glued. It's pushed down on your head, and I see it in the spirit. And I command it. I'm just pulling it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm pulling it off of you. And I'm, whew, there it goes. Now your mind is open. It's, it's like there's been such a heavy heaviness of depression, but also um, fear, anxiety, but also it's been trying to block your understanding and your wisdom. You want wisdom and understanding from God. That's Proverbs more than anything. So I pray God gives you the wisdom of Solomon. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Getting back to what I prayed, when I started reading the Bible after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is the Holy Spirit imparted in you when you have the Spirit of God. But then there's the second prayer when He comes up on you and you are filled with His Spirit to overflowing every single day and the peace that comes with it and the anointing and the power. It's, it's kind of like if you're you're in the military. Okay, you go through boot camp and you're at, you're in the army of God. Well, then you get you, you got to go through your... Every soldier has to go through, I mean... You know, vets out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every soldier has to at least learn how to shoot a gun and before they send you to your stations or whatever. Not everybody's infantry, but you still need to know how to how to handle your weapon if, if it's ever where everybody has to get them. Um, but being filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in His fire, that's where you, it's like you get your... your um, your guns and everything. And that's how you learn how to fight the devil and how you learn how to fight um, and stand on the word. It's your power. It's this most beautiful power to overcome. Now, you are a target from the kingdom of darkness, but you were covered by his blood and by his spirit. The Bible says we are sealed by his spirit until the day of redemption. I want to do another video on the Holy Spirit. But that's the second thing you need to ask for is after you give your heart to Christ Say, Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost and baptize me in your fire. And that's where you will have the evidence of praying your heavenly language. It's what happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 1 and 2 when Jesus told them to go there and wait. Somebody say, wait until they were endued with power from on high. Some people run out there in their ministries or in whatever they're training for. And the Lord hasn't anointed them or endued them with power to go yet. You gotta wait till the Lord tells you to go, and then He'll give you His His blessing, His mantle, and His anointing. Because you gotta go through your training, and you gotta learn 
patience and you got to learn certain things, you know, and he gives it to you step by step. But I received that when I was 19. So the Lord, you know, my granny had it, my great grandma, had it, but the Lord sent people to me to, to lead me to the fullness of Christ because I know now it's because of what I was going to walk through in my life, but also because of the calling on my life. I did not realize. I always knew I was different in junior high and high school. I got saved on my 12th birthday. But I was in junior high school having dreams about the second coming. And they were so vivid and so real. I would wake up sweating or crying. or, But yet it was, it was so beautiful. And I could still describe the dreams to this day. Um... The main, and the main one, it was a repeated one. There was just a bunch of people running through like this big um, banquet hall, but it was also like this huge building, community center. And I could hear people say, the king is coming or Jesus is coming. And everybody was running. And there were tape, just long tables of food set. You know, we're talking about the marriage supper of the lamb, and that'll be another video. But these people were preparing a big banquet. You know, they were feasting, and all of a sudden, as the Bible said, the last days will be like the days of Noah. People will be constantly eating, partying, getting married, um, a lot of sin and debauchery. Noah lived in a very filthy, sinful time. That's why God flooded the earth with, um, well, with the flood and told him to build the ark, because he basically wiped out mankind, and the only righteous people were Moses and his family. Now, God gave them all a chance. Moses, not Moses, Noah. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Moses in my mind, but it was Noah. But Noah gave them all a chance to repent, and he kept telling them. He kept preaching, kept building his, his ark, and people laughed at him and made fun of him until it started raining. So, be careful who you mock and who you make fun of who serves God, because the Lord will prove them out and He will fight for them. And he will show you, hey, I'm the one who told them to tell you this. And when you become surrendered to him and you start hearing him in your spirit. See, Jesus came after he left with us, left us or left the earth. God sent hit the Holy Spirit. This is why he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He was God was here from the beginning. That's one thing I don't I don't know the answer to. You know, some people ask me, well, how long has he been here? How did he get here? I said, you know what? He just was. And one day he's going to explain all this to us. You just got to believe him. And then he came to us and sent us through his son, Jesus. And then after Jesus was crucified and died and rose, God raised him back up and took him to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit to be with us. So he's God has fulfilled his promises to us every single day. But are we fulfilling our, our promises to him? Oh, Lord, if you'll do this for me, I'll do this, and blah, blah, blah. Remember that? So, just say, Lord, when, you're, when, I'm, when you go to read the Word, the Bible, it's also called the Living Word, the Word of God, the Sword of the Spirit. This is a sword. It cuts everything. When you go to read, just say, Lord, let me read. This is what I pray. Lord, let me read it. And help me to understand it as if I was there with you living it. Let me see it how you saw it. Let me feel what you felt. Let me see what you see about people and what you feel about people. And I just ask you to do that in Jesus' name. And I'm going to tell you, when you do that, it's going to blow your mind what you're going to see and feel. And the love that you're going to feel for people. And the love that you're going to feel for just for life and humanity. But also, there will be times you will have righteous indignation or anger. Like he had for the, kind of like when Jesus made the whip and he went and tore the temple up because people were buying and selling in his house. That's a word for people that are in a church and you're doing your little side businesses in there. Don't, don't do business in church. That's the house of God. Um, I mean, I know that there's times that the pastors may have a business workshop day and allow you to come in and, you know, have, um, you know, like women's Saturday things where you can, it's a work fair and things, you know, to help people get jobs. That's, that's okay as long as the Lord has given the pastor permission. But I'm talking about where you're just constantly coming to church just to do business and get, get new recruits and do this, that, and the other. That's the house of God. That's the house of prayer. You do that outside of the church. You just contact them. You By doing that, you're honoring Christ. And I had no intentions of saying this, but he just popped this in my mind. 
because God is cleaning the house. And he said, judgment first, first begins at the house of God. It begins with us first, but he's cleaning his churches. And some he's going to he's gonna shake to the core, and some he's going to shut down for good. The pandemic shut a bunch down, but he's, he's going to start shutting down more because they're not obeying his word, and they're not walking as Christ walked. It's become more of a, of a show and a clubhouse, and he's not pleased with it, and people are buying and selling. And I'm going to tell you something. If Jesus whipped it once, he, he's, he, he can do it again because he said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So don't be out there using the name of the Lord to build your business. It's okay to say, you know, God gave me this business and I'm doing it for his glory. But it's all about the intent and the motive and why you're doing it. Um, so, you know, um, just, just honor his house, you know, honor his temple, respect it. And the temple, the first temple is this one, but also when you go to the house of the Lord. And that could be in somebody's front yard. It could be in a church building. It could be in a high school gymnasium, but just honor wherever you're at because the presence of God is there. So that is the word for tonight, the word without. It can mean lacking, wanting, needing, requiring, short of, in need of, deprived of, destitute of, or it can mean without or outside the city gates or outside. So when you're reading the word, and you see the word without, one that's popping in my mind right now is Hebrews eleven six. Without faith or the lack of faith, it's impossible to please God. So Lord, give us the faith of, us, of the centurion and increase our faith. Forgive us for any doubt or unbelief. We believe you, Lord. Help our unbelief. And you guys have a blessed night, and I'll see you in the next video. And I'll be uh, starting the kingdom marriage uh, messages very, very soon. So be looking for those. All right. God bless you. Good night.